The feature recognition tool was introduced in Wildfire 4.0 and in some ways is a precursor to flexible modeling functionality. So let's take a look at it. Here I have a part model started off with my default template and I'm going to import a step file and I will click the OK button to bring in the geometry. And so now you can see that if I hit the check mark, I have an import feature in the model tree, but I have geometry that I can't edit unless I go to the import data doctor by using edit definition. I could go and manipulate it in some ways, or in these days, you could use the flexible modeling tab. But back in the day, you really didn't have many ways in order to manipulate imported geometry. So feature recognition was added. And in order to use feature recognition, first you need to enable it. If I go to File Options and then click Configuration Editor, there is an option called FRT Enabled. And the default value is No, and so you have to set that to Yes. And be aware, it's got a little symbol next to the option that looks like a computer screen. And that means that Creo Parametric has to be restarted in order to make this option available. If it had the lightning sign, it would become available immediately. But I already have it enabled, so I'm going to cancel out of here. And let's turn off our datum plane visibility. And so I've got my imported geometry. And again, feature recognition allows you to take the entities in the imported geometry and turn them into rich Creo parametric features. And the way that you do it is by starting off selecting either an edge or a surface, some kind of seed input. And in Creo parametric 4.0, you are in geometry selection by default. If you are using Creo parametric 3.0 and earlier, and the smart filter is enabled in the lower right hand corner of the screen, you'll have to select a feature first and then select geometry. But I selected an edge of that boss. And now if I go to get data, I have this feature recognition menu available to me. And I'll click search extrude. And so it's put a remove feature in the model and then an extrude feature with an internal sketch. And I can edit definition of this feature. You can see that I have a depth option. And if I go to the placement tab, I can edit the internal sketch and you can see all the different entities and the dimensions. And so this is a fully editable and modifiable feature right now. Let's cancel out of here and cancel out of edit definition and, con and continue on with this. So next up, I can recognize rounds in the model. Maybe I'll select this top surface here go to get data feature recognition and then search fillet and it converted that edge fillet into a feature and again edit definition and there you can see the radius value and I can add additional sets change the radius do whatever I want as if I had created this natively let's continue on with this okay so if I take a look over here, there's an, a fillet around that boss over there. And so let's take a look at another technique. So I'm going to select this surface. And again, we will search for fillets. And it converted two fillets in the model, one around the outside and then one around this boss over here. And so if I want to turn this part into a feature itself, well, let's go and drag the insert here arrow up above the round so that they're no longer in here. And now I can select, say the edge, get data, feature recognition, and search extrude. And now we have extrude two in the model, which is a feature that I can continue to modify. When I grab the insert here arrow and bring back the rounds, you'll notice that one of them failed because it's looking for the edges from before the remove feature. So let's edit definition. Here it highlights the edges that are missing. Let me highlight one, query select in order to get to the intent edges and hit the check mark. 
now my round is no longer failing. All right, let's take a look at a few other different options. Hey, we have a bunch of holes on this surface. Let's select the surface, get data, feature recognition, search hole. Now I've got three editable holes in the model. Let's see, flip the model over. Hey, we've got some chamfers. Select the surface, get data, feature recognition, and search chamfer. Now we have chamfer one, again, fully editable feature. And for some reason it shows a D1 by D2 dimensioning scheme with the same values for D1 and D2. But again, I can change to whatever scheme that I want to use. Let's cancel out of here. And another thing to show, okay, on the top surface, we have a bunch of holes on here. So let's select the surface, get data, feature recognition, oops, feature recognition, search pattern. And now I have a pattern of holes. Let's expand that. And looks like I have about 22 holes in there. If I edit definition, it used a table pattern. And if I click the edit button, it takes me into pro table edit, and then I can go and manipulate the values in here or add additional dimensions. All right, hit the check mark. So if you take a look at the model tree, we have a whole bunch of remove features, just like the remove command that is available from the editing drop down menu, and also the same remove command that is available from the flexible modeling tab. What you can also do is reorder the features in your model tree. Maybe I'm gonna drag all the remove features up to the top. I haven't turned this into a fully editable model, but I could have continued on doing this. And once I have all the remove features at the top, maybe to organize the model tree, I will use the shift key to select them and then from the mini toolbar, I can turn this into a group that won't be as noticeable in the model. Or let's say I don't want these remove features in here at all with the group still selected. Going to the editing overflow menu, I can choose the collapse command and it gives me the option to select a range of features in order to collapse them and features like analysis features and annotations and published geoms and cosmetic features can be excluded from the collapse function but I'll click OK and now I just have an incremental geometry feature I don't even have a remove in there if I grab the insert here arrow and drag it up you can see that hey the remove feature took out all this stuff that ended up getting turned into rich features. Let's right click on insert here, click exit insert mode. Yes, let's resume the features. So again, this is a great way of turning generally prismatic, regular imported features into features that you can manipulate later on. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.